is Dan Milano, K3TEF, and I have a brief tutorial on how I connected N3FJP logging software to my IC7300, but then more importantly, how I utilized Digital Engine as my RIDI software with that connection that N3FJP has with my uh, IC7300. So to start off, we need to enable RTS uh, keying in the 7300 rig because that's what N3FJP uh, software is going to use to key your rig. So to do that, we're gonna to go to menu, we'll go to set, go to connectors, go to USB send forward slash keying, and then we're gonna to go to USB send. And we're going to select RTS. All right, so now we are set up to allow N3FJP to key the rig. Uh, via RTS over the COM port. So that leads us into the next thing. We are going to connect N3FJP software uh, via COM port um, that was set up when you installed the software from ICOM. If you have not set up that software from ICOM for COM port uh, connection, go to the ICOM software uh, download section and go get that for your rig. So we need to find the device uh, the COM port uh, values that we need to put into N3FJP's logging software. So to do that, we're gonna click on run and we're gonna type in device for device manager and device manager comes up. So we click on device manager and we're gonna go down in this list, we're gonna go to ports, okay? And we're gonna find the uh, COM port that the driver software from ICOM when then installed, your Windows operating system assigned it a COM port. So in my instance, it was COM 11. Um, now I'm running th some different things here. So my values in this COM port are going to be different from your values. And it's also gonna be different from the values that I have in N3FJP. So don't let that throw you off. But what we're going to do is we're gonna match the values that are in this COM port uh, uh, profile. We're going to match that with N3FJP's uh, COM port configuration. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight that. We're going to right click and we're going to select properties. And you're going to go up here to port settings in that COM port 11, which is mine. Yours is obviously going to be different. And we're going to go ahead and take this window, put it over in the corner um, so we can reference it later. Let's minimize this. Okay. So this is N3FJP's logging software. I'm using his North American QSIP party version. So let's go ahead and move this guy over here. All right. So now go to settings. Go to rig interface. And the first thing we want to do before we set any of these values is we're going to select a rig. Okay, so I use an IC7300. I just selected the first ICOM in the list. Okay, and then you're going to be using, you're going to have to match up your ports. Um, obviously, the port to the ICOM rig is um, COM11 here in this instance. I'm using a virtual port in a different scheme, but you're going to select COM11 because you want these to match up, all right? And then you're going to take the the value that you see in this in this window and you're going to match it over here into the baud rate. You're going to then match your data bits here, and match your parity here. So we got none. Stop bits will be one, and flow control. Right here is connection power is none, okay? Now again, make sure that you have the right COM port that's in this uh, profile is selected here. Mine is different. I'm doing something different. Don't pay attention to that. <laughs> okay, so these this area here is more or less your uh, personal preferences. This is a you know radio, poll radio polling rate. Uh, I just kept it at the default of 500 milliseconds and all these other ones are kind of self-explanatory here. Um, 
and you can select the ones that you want if you want it to return lower sideband and upper sideband rather than just single sideband. There's also some other ones here. That can also be font. A lot of this stuff can be found in uh, N3FJP site. But these are the uh, this is the important key factors here that I needed to make sure these hex values that are in here, these values here, these command values, make sure that if you have an IC7300, that these are the ones that you're using. So you can use this these off of this video and make sure you're just set that the exact same way. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, test this connection. Okay, so we have a successful test because now we're getting frequency back from the radio and we're also getting a mode back from the radio. And this is the data stream coming back from the radio being translated by Scott's program into these, uh, these frequency values and this mode value. Once you have this working, what you really ought to do is save the settings so that if something gets boogered up in here and you accidentally click something later on, you can go ahead and load them back up and everything will be restored. So to save the settings, you just click on the save settings button and it'll save it into this file path here. Just remember this file path. Of course, this is gonna be your name here, you know, your computer's name or your username. Um, that's my wife, of course, it's not me. <laughs> and uh, here's me, here's both of my rigs here that are set, that are saved. So I can recall them at any time I want. If I accidentally change something, or something, usually it's a user error, and it would be me changing something. So you can always go back and recall them. All right, so now we have the polling. So we got the first part down. The second part is we wanna get the digital engine uh, program to connect to N3FJP. So in order to do that, we need to enable N3FJP to listen for that, uh, that digital engine program. To do that, you go to settings, and you go down here to the API, which is application program interface. And you wanna click this checkbox right here. So this will enable your local machine to enable all traffic on this port to N3FJP's software. So you're enabling this, this as a listener for N3FJP, it's their software. So go ahead and click that. It done. Now you've done that portion. So you can minimize the logger. We can cancel out of this here. And we're going to open up Digital Engine. All right. So Digital Engine is open now. Uh, we are not connected to N3FJP yet because we don't have a frequency uh, being repeated back to our user interface here. Um, but what we want to do is we want to configure, now we want to configure Digital Engine to talk to that API that you just enabled on the logger. So go to configure and go to N3FJP. And these are the values that are going to come up automatically. If they're not, make sure your value is localhost. That basically just means this machine, send it to this machine locally here on server port 1100, which is exactly what we did over here. So we enable that, see? So now that's listening on this port and Digital Engine is going to be talking on that port. You wanna make sure that you have these checkboxes checked. Um, these three here, especially this one, handle, transmit, and receive. So what's going to happen is, is that you're gonna be able to set up a macro to transmit and and put your rig into transmit and then send data and then put it into receive. And that command function is gonna be facilitated by Digital Engine through N3FJP down to your rig. All right. So also make ha make these checkboxes, uh, uh, fill, you know, checkbox these, these boxes in as well. Um, read uh, the call sign feedback or read back the call sign and start up, uh, at startup, you want to reconnect to N3FJP. And what this does up here, the call sign readback, is that when you're in the logger, you can type in a call sign. I'll use mine for an example. Go back here and it'll show up here. But we'll show you that in a second. Okay. 
And then the next thing we're going to do is configure your sound interface. So with the ICOM 7300, you can, you can route sound through the USB comm connection. And when you load up that software that I uh, discussed earlier in this tutorial, it'll actually create some sound interfaces there for you. So there's mine happens to be under, you know, the sound interface five USB audio codec. And so I have both of those selected now. You're going to have to figure out when you load up that software, um, which, you know, th there's going to be new, two new audio codecs that are going to be in your sound, uh, uh, in your sound management of your operating system. And those are going to be the ones that you're going to use. Do not pay attention to this box because we're not going to key straight from digital engine to your radio. So we're not going to do that. We're going to do it through N3FJP, which we already configured it over here. So do not, don't let this mislead you. It did, it did me at first, but then I realized we actually already have that configured when we configured N3FJP's uh, profile within digital engine. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select that. So what we're going to do when, when, when you do this is basically turns on that configuration to N3FJP's logging software. So you can do that just by selecting in the drop-down list, or you can use this hotkey, Alt, Shift, and N. So now we know that we're connected now to N3FJP's logger because it's reading back our frequency. All right. And so now let's go ahead. Now this is new. Let's type in. Another. Now we have it connected. Now you can see that there's that there's that bi-directional data that's flowing. So now um, you know that this is talking to N3FJP. You know N3FJP is talking to your rig. Um, so now we're going to test everything out. So of course, with uh, you know, in this instance where I'm using the North American QSO party, there's three uh, there's three bits of there's three sections of data that you want to log. It's going to be the call sign, the name, and the state. Right? That's if it's a North American contact. And we're going to use that as an example. So we got the call sign in there. Now you could change that. You can click on the call sign here in the buffer as you're decoding signals. They're going to show up here, depending on where you have your brackets centered on. If you have it centered on a signal, you'll get you'll decode their call signs that they're sent in. So you can send to call sign. So I just clicked on this. It, it automatically knows that I just want that this part of data, and I don't want to pay attention to anything on either either side of the, you know, it parses it according, according to the space. And you're gonna say send to call sign. And look, now it changed, it changed it to this call sign, which is my own. And now that changed it in the N3FJP software. Let's just say that this is, um, this is the name. Let's just say the name of the person is testing, <laughs> for instance, send to name. Now we have a name here. Let's check back here. Ooh, look, we have testing in the name, the name box. So I think we're doing pretty good here. Let's uh, go ahead and let's use this bit of data here, PBA. And let's just say that that is the state. Let's just say that that actually came across as PA. So we're going to set that as the state that this, uh, this station K3TEF is sending us. So now we got PBA here. And of course, PBA is over here. Beauty. So all along, we're sending all the data straight from here into the logging software, and we don't have to manually input anything into logging software, which is wonderful. OK, so now if I say log, let's go ahead and click on log with all this data in here. Let's just say that I, I went through my 73s, and we made all the transmissions here, which I didn't demonstrate. But um, let's just say we did that. Hit log. Now, if you notice, uh, it's going to say PBA is an invalid abbreviation. So let's go ahead and change that to PA. Because uh, that's what, exactly what would be sent. Let's hit log. And look, now we have it in here. It has logged it for us. OK? So we, don't, uh, we of course, don't want that in there because that's not a valid thing. It's not a valid QSO. So I'm um, sorry, let's delete. 
Yes. And yes, we want to set the recount to 231. Awesome. Okay. So now that brings us to the next thing is setting up your macros. If you, you know, if you're contesting or just say whatever you want to, but in this instance it's contesting. So we're going to right click this here and you're going to see that there's these wildcard characters here that are separated by these carrots and, uh, you can find them here. So these wildcards will actually just put in your call. We'll put in you know, your name or whatever else, any of these other data entry points, it'll automatically put that stuff in for you. And how that does that is that you get that over here when you uh, configure your information. That's over here in configure personal. All right, so back to macros. So, with this wildcard character TX, it means it'll put your rig into transmit. This one here, we'll put in your rig into, it'll, it'll clear the buffer and we'll put in your rig into receive. And this here is, of course, it's going to take my call out of my personal information up from up here in the configuration tab. And it's also going to, you know, it's going to do it here as well. So um, I set up one to do some testing. So I did one to do transmit rx clear and then and the body of data i'm sending is my call testing and my call so this would be a good good way to test everything that we just configured let's uh let's make sure we're monitoring let's turn up the volume here don't know if we're gonna be able to hear this so we're gonna go ahead and send this so now we got volume we got audio modulation going to the rig which is modulating our signal. We're getting power out. We're also connected uh, to transmit and receive via digital engine and N3FJP software. So we have proven that everything is working correctly that we just set up. Uh, we went over macros here. And these are just some macros that I have set up for running a frequency in the RIDI contest with my name, my states, you know, my call and to go back into receive, to transmit and all the rest. So that kind of concludes like the basic tutorial and how I got everything set up and how everything works. And it's, and it's beautiful. I just literally just keep this screen up here. Um, and this is really all, the only thing I use for the most part. Um, I mean, I will keep the logger up on my second screen, which is above the screen, which you can't see in this tutorial, but, and I'll just make sure that everything's flowing over really well. And sometimes I'll have to do like a hot edit real quick in here and, and then hit log. But uh, know that you can, the data flows back and forth between these two software suites and they work really nicely together. Um, so I guess that kind of concludes things. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, drop me a line, uh, an email at k3tef at arrl.net. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you. Um, I didn't really see anything that kind of showcased uh, Digital Engine with uh, N3FJP's logging software when it comes to RIDI contesting. Kind of had to figure this one out. Uh, there is a there is a white paper on uh, N3FJP's uh, site that you can utilize as well. But hopefully this will kind of give you some practical application and a video tutorial that will help you all even more. So 7-3 and uh, hope to get you in the log uh, at some point in time. And again, uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, send them to me. Take care.